It's three minutes past 11. A very good morning. It's a fantastic, fun-filled Friday right here on the Midday Show with me, Ifunaya. Here on Lagos Talks 91.3. Welcome, welcome, as always. And I'm sure you've been waiting for your favorite show on radio Fridays from 11 a.m. It is, of course, the people's perspective where we dissect T-P-P-O. different topical issues from your perspective. And my co-host... Is in the studio as always, Shen Kuti with his also nice nails. Big bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Shen, what inspired your nails? I can see your nails are very colorful. Yeah, I mean, um, I did the colors of MOP party: uh, red, black, green. Oh. You know, red for the blood, black for the people, green for the land. Wow. You know, that's yeah. a very. I like it. Very well done. But I did nails. all the five. Then I did black and. You know, and since I've been looking at it, it looks really nice. You women are up onto something. <laughs> I think I'm joining you. We've been I'm onto something you. for several years. Yeah, yeah, you people have for been quiet about this. Uh, I'm joining you. I'm <laughs> joining you. We're appropriating. <laughs> what? We're appropriating. What culture? Uh, finger painting. The feminine culture. We are all embracing our f- uh, feminine sides now. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Anyways, guys, welcome to the show today. So today's theme is going to be majorly on insecurity in Nigeria. A few things have been happening um, in the space of just a few days. It's a short space of time. It's back to back to back to back cases of insecurity in different parts of Nigeria. So we're going to be taking on the story about the schoolboys who were kidnapped in Niger State. We're going to talk about the unrest in Olu in Imo State yesterday. And in general, we're going to talk about insecurity and the roles the governors also have to play as the chief security officers of their different states. So just starting off with what um, is happening in Olu, Imo State. Let's go back to the 25th of January. I, I believe we did touch on that the Friday after um, this unrest happened in Olu when we received reports of heavy shootings in Olu in Imo State. Now, the narrative was that there was a military operation in the community as a result of a clash between the army and some youth believed to be members of the Eastern Security Network, that is ESN which of course led to the death of some civilians. We saw some videos, we saw people, you know, crying over the dead bodies and it was a whole lot of mayhem going on then. Now, to just yesterday in Olu, there was panic again um, in the Orsu local government in Imo state as the Nigerian military began operations in search of the camps occupied by the personnel of the Eastern Security Network linked to the indigenous people of Biafra. Now, an army spokesperson confirmed the operation and he said that the locals were not being harassed. He did confirm the deployment of helicopters and other military gadgets in the operations. And the army spokesperson said that the operation was an offshoot of military intelligence. And just speaking with newsmen out there, um, they were able to gather from an indigent of that particular local government, you know, speaking on the issue, saying that although, you know, there is unrest in that particular area due to this military uh, 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 movement, that no civilian was harassed or shot um, in light of what was going on at the time yes, yesterday. You know, nobody was shot at Lekki Toge too. Well, that's the narrative. Uh, that's mean, the that's the official narrative so I mean, I mean, that we have received. You have to received. understand that the Nigerian army they are very very professional. So, like, okay, so just taking a look at this particular story, Shion, because the military is saying that they are acting based on intelligence. Now, if the military comes out to tell us that they are acting based on intelligence and that there is a fraction or a group that has maybe plotted or planned to cause some sort of mayhem or unrest of course, affecting our national security. One can say that we can't outrightly say that the military is right or wrong because they are saying to us that they are doing their jobs acting based on intelligence. However, you know, from the citizens, what they are pretty much identifying is the difference in action um, and response by the military towards the ESN and also towards the herdsmen. And there's a comparison well, because people think, are wondering if there's a difference, well, if one has you know, been tagged. I think, no, no, no. Mili- but, uh, let's be, let's be, let's not um, remove things from their context. Okay. ESN is fighting. Is I don't. We we'll fight or we we'll begin to fight the kind of war Boko Haram is fighting. Mm. You understand? So this is a war, a political war to claim territory 
and put territory under new command. Hmm. See, headsmen are not fighting to claim territory. Indeed. They are bandits. Indeed. And I don't, I don't, sorry, I said headsmen. Sorry, everybody. These criminals and... These bandits. And bandits. No, it's true because when we say headsmen all the time, headsmen, people will start attacking. If, as I said before, me, I cannot allow one innocent headman, mm. headman or head boy <laughs> be slaughtered in the name of, you know, this whole um, crisis that we're having that is actually being quite mishandled and state managed yes you know by those that need violence to happen so that they can be relevant um when we look at um uh esn for me what matters here is that the government has not provided enough proof to mm -hmm. take the action that they have taken so we agree now you can come and say yes uh, ESN, you have information, they want to start war, blah, blah, blah. all well and good, you take your action. But then the burden of proof lays solely on the accuser. Of course. You now have to prove, it is not the, the accused that has to prove your allegation. Since you've said these people are, and now you've gone to do all this, your usual um, um, power show, you know, it is important that we... also demand for the evidence to justify such an action because it is not today that the nigerian army has been overhanded with the nigerian people and when you know uh nigerian army are saying well they are conducting peaceful program and citizens are saying they are harassed mm -hmm. maybe nigerian army don't know your presence alone is an harassment to our soul <laughs> once we see you the way our hearts they caught is an harassment to our spirit you know we start to sweat in, <laughs> in hidden places, <laughs> you know, just hoping you don't say, come here. <laughs> if you hear, come here, your soul will first stand outside, say, go alone. <laughs> your, soul, your soul will stand alone and say, you first go outside first, go know it's in the apple there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, so your presence alone in our communities, yeah. because you have not made yourself into, you know, our defenders, of really, course. in any it way. Like you know, I say to the Nigerian people, like, in the story of our freedom, to become Nigeria, to become Nigeria, whatever we have gained in this country, tell me one rule. <clears throat> what which one the army fight, the mm. Nigerian army fight for? These military people that we are the except that they connived, uh, joined the army together and fought a civil war mm. that for that destroyed this country. That's the legacy of Nigerian army. Civil mm. war, they've not done anything greater than the civil war in '66. Mm. These Nigerian army people, since they've been ruling us, Nigerian army people. But you know, <laughs> I want to know, is the military obligated to prove to us yes, of that course. they have intelligence course, to pursue of course, not, the ESN? Not to go and prove to us on the page of newspaper, but to go to the Senate, you know, and uh, be grilled, interviewed, mm -hmm. interrogated, not interrogated, but interviewed on the action taken in the theater of war. Because mm -hmm. they've turned Eastern Nigeria now also to a theater of war to a certain extent as mm -hmm. they've done Northern Nigeria. So the burden of proof, you know, lays on the accuser. I mean, it is a uh, this is a, um, law one hundred and one. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> but Baba Sheon, what are your thoughts about the citizens? Because, of course, Nigerians want to be protected. The military ought to protect, you know, our territory and our borders. However, Nigerians are more concerned by the overzealousness, so to speak, of the military towards this particular fraction yes. in comparison to how they have been responding to the terrorist groups in Nigeria. Uh -huh. Okay, from that aspect, I mean, uh, you also have to look at it from the level, from the angle of godfatherism. Mm. How powerful are the godfathers of these boys in the East? How powerful are the godfathers of those ones operating in the north? That's all it is. Is it is how powerful is your godfather? <laughs> it's case because that's the game. Wow. That is the game. This is not a matter of you know. So, godfathers make things happen in this country for for it, it, they even put president in wow. this position. It, you know, uh, there's one book I just I had to force myself to read it because oh, oh my god, I don't okay. Let me not. But I read the book. I, uh, you know, it's called by a guy called Tom Burgess. Uh, it's called the Looting Machine. Okay. You know, and he talks about uh, how looting happens in Nigeria. He actually names names. 
you know. Oh, interesting. And talks about it. And when you see the game that people play, and when they now talk about security, but the same people that are creating the insecurity by making the borders porous that anything can pass through the Nigerian border. Anything whatsoever. Anybody can move anything how they want in this country. I see the same people that will be shouting eh, insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. They are still the ones benefiting from the insecurity. So, you know, as they say in um, America, follow the money. Mm. They want to get to the bottom of any crisis they were ever in Nigeria. Everybody should just sit back, relax, and, and see who is money. benefiting. Let's follow mm. the money, you know. Uh, it is still, and I believe so, that uh, internally speaking, you know, we as Nigerian people must begin to become class conscious. The class consciousness is something that is not really prevalent in our analysis and narratives mm. in Nigeria. You know, the clear division between the poor the working class and the professionals and the elites of the country. There's no clear division because the elites have used their money to influence, you know, all the institute, no, you know, to control all the institutions of influence in this country. Mm. Religion, education, mm, and media. These are the institutions, you know, because entertainment falls under media mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, and they sing their praises, they take their awards, they hail them, they praise them. There's no strong critique of their actions. So, people do not see a, along class lines. You know, so they are, instead of people to see things across class lines, to realize the, because once you uh, once you become class conscious, it's very easy to see the person against you. Hmm. You understand? But then, when they know that they don't give you that consciousness, they now begin to draw these fake lines that don't exist. Religious mm-hmm. lines, ethnic lines, you know, even gender lines, you know, and all that. Hmm. Anything to divide, you know, the poor and working class people Indeed. of the country yeah. from being one, hmm. you know. So, for me, definitely, uh, what is going on in Nigeria um, is uh, nothing but the will of the elite of this country. Of course. And with the people of the country, we must, be, we must stand in resistance to. You know, and the best way to resist is to organize. I say, I even say people that say they want to fight, they want to fight. Hmm. I say, how do you fight without organizing? Mm-hmm. Even though you want to fight, if fighting is your last, is your, is your aim. Before you start that fight, you must organize now. Why are we afraid of the work of organizing politically? At least so that we know what we are, what we are for. Hmm. And be able to just want to go to fight every man for himself. Just yeah. see anybody that looks like Ausa, you fight him. Anybody that looks like Ibu, you fight him. Then any boomer say, I mean. So, so Sherman, because you, you made mention, you know, we, especially with the political elites, just looking for means to further divide us as a people. Now, with this division that is taking place and with the way the military has responded to the ESN in comparison to the way they responded to, you know, Boko Haram, banditry yeah. and the likes. And you made mention that it's all about Godfatherism, you know, the Godfathers in the East, the Godfathers, oh. you know, up north and all that. Now, what do you think this means in terms of the division of the people? Because if we're further divided, you know, a lot of people ha- have been saying that we are inching towards another civil war if we're further divided to a point where we get to that point of civil war even the elites would lose because where there is unrest they everyone lose, starts, this was, everyone let starts me you, first of all our elites you know they are not ours hmm. in the sense that they are a part of us i will stake my new car mm-hmm. on the fact that probably there's no nigerian serving politician in high office today whose children only hold Nigerian passports. Of course. Mm-hmm. Their most true. expensive properties are not in Nigeria. Mm. Their most expensive... You'll be surprised to find out that African rich people are investing mm. in military-industrial complex in America, wow. in Lockheed, in Boeing, companies that are making bombs that are coming to key African people, hmm. instead of developing our own local armament companies, no matter how bad to start somewhere. I mean, look at the Biafra war when nobody, when there was an embargo and nobody could ship arms to the Easterners. Look at what they came up with. Hmm. Go and read the history of the war. Such, in, such they were 
the ingenuity that came out of the East during the Civil War was incredible. Why? Because they couldn't look outside. They looked within. Yeah. You know? That's so, very true. for me, it is, it is a... One point, in fact, is if you look at Ebony State now to now, suddenly Ebony State is one of the most quiet states. You don't hear anything from Ebony State. Nothing. You hear nothing from that state. Suddenly now, we first hear that the governor moved from PDP to APC. Some few months down the line, there's communal clash mm. in Ebony State. Yeah. There's violence everywhere. I mean, <laughs> it's easy for Nigerians to draw the line if we want to draw the line, you know. But I think most people are not interested in that. You know, want to point the easy finger, want to look for the poor man to hate because in, inside our heart, we still want to be an oppressor. You know, we're an oppressor and waiting. So we don't want to rock this oppressor boat. Yeah. So look for anything that doesn't blame the oppressors for what is happening. <laughs> it is it is the poor heads, it is the heads man that, that is the problem. All this, right, this let's, heads let's men. take some um, <laughs> calls and read some tweets and WhatsApp messages. If you're listening, please feel free to join the conversation. What are your thoughts at about the current unrest in Olu State, um, in Imo State, I beg your pardon, Olu specifically in Imo. Um, what are your thoughts about this and what do you think this means for uh, the state of security in Nigeria if a specific group of people feel like they are poorly treated in comparison with other people? other parts of Nigeria, talking about, you know, the banditry taking place up north and the activities of, of Boko Haram in, it, in mm. other parts, in other all, parts all of Nigeria. Nigeria. Uh, what are your thoughts about this and how do you believe this is going to affect the entirety of Nigeria moving forward? Please feel free to join the conversation. Uh, Lagos Talks, good morning. What's your name? Hello, good morning. Effie. Good morning. What's your name, please? My name is Val. Val, welcome. Join the conversation. Yeah. Show, show, good morning. Good morning. They have, they have two things. They have two things to say. First of all, if you, I'm very sorry, thank you for yesterday. But because of network discussion, I couldn't get that number. So if you could kindly read it out again, maybe towards the end of the show, I'll be listening. I appreciate it. What number is that? Or oh, IBN and yesterday. Um, well, we'd have to wait for him to be back in the studio because I don't have that number with me at the moment. But if I'm able okay, to get okay. across to him, I'll let all you know. Right. But join so, the conversation, secondly, please. So, I, I think I'm basically... Eh, the approach that the military is taking up for um, pertaining to this Eastern Security Network Fox is the approach of an oppressor, okay? Having trying to conquer maybe a particular interest or a particular region. Because I don't see why if something like this were to be happening, probably they would have summoned or called a security meeting, at least to brief the chief security officers of this state, call their attention to this particular incident, all the leaders, the traditional rulers, and all that to talk to these people, so that they can that they can use another approach to quell this particular tension. For them to just forcefully get in there and start maybe harassing or taking this, it shows bias because where the where the crisis are really happening, we don't see this kind of approach. We don't find them taking this kind of approach. So it's mm. obvious that from our own our own perception, they are biased. They are biased for a particular region, and it's un, it's unacceptable. Now, how powerful do you think the traditional rulers are in the scheme of things going on in these different parts of Nigeria, especially in the north? Because a lot of people have been calling on the traditional rulers saying that they have influence enough to cause um, um, a certain level of peace in the midst of the unrest that's going on. Me, I think pastors in Nigeria today have more power than any traditional ruler. Interesting. I mean, in that uh, within <laughs> camp, the king of that area, Aladeboye, who do you think is more Did you say the king? They, you have one ballet in the area now. Okay, the, okay, the king of that area. Yeah. Okay, 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 yes. Who do you think okay. is more influential? Well, you tell me. <laughs> I mean, I believe it's Aladeboye, hands down, you know, in that uh, regime area. So, I mean, traditional rulers can only do so much, especially when everybody has... See, before, I mean, just like in 2012, not that they, if you remember very well, Fashola denied that he uh, invited the military. Mm. Now they've exposed one letter <laughs> where he said, yes, he agreed, but not to this extent that they've tried it. should not be going. Because, see, what we see is the outcome. Yeah. We don't see the backroom dealings. Exactly. You know, what has the governor said about this military occupation of his state? It is important that we should also find out what is the governor saying. Because if he is not sanctioned, 
by the state, then that means and the state is not under a state of emergency. That means that state is being occupied by the Nigerian military. Mm. So the governor should be like, ah, why is there army in my state? Yes. Shooting people, whatever. But so what has been, what have we heard so far? Mm. You know, so everybody is probably in on the act. We are the 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 marks. So we are the last to know. You know, so That's me, I, I I try as much as possible. You know, I mean, when Obasan Obasanjo was the head of state, it was Yoruba when they burnt my father's house mm. and killed my grandmother. Anna. It wasn't uh, Buhari that come, came to do it from the north. You know, it wasn't. Um, uh, who was who is a powerful Igbo general? You people don't have a lot of those. Says <laughs> <is> you people. <laughs> Since since civil war, they don't trust you people to put you there anymore. <laughs> you <don't want> to. <laughs> Let's read this coming from um, Philip saying, How can Nigerian military conduct airstrike in Olu? What is the offense of the Igbos? In a country where the Minister of Defense has asked people to defend themselves because the government is not ready to fight the organizations that are killing people everywhere in the country. This is coming from Francis saying, um, uh, hi, I'm Francis. NBC has clustered your wavelength. We can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Francis is saying, TPP, everybody say, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. I will try and speak with the engineers and show them, please, specifically what area you're talking about. Let's not just accuse NBC and say that they're the ones doing it. This is coming from Kelewenski saying today. I it believe is... the guy, though. I'm, I'm allowed my beliefs. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> my beliefs cannot be sanctioned by NBC. This is coming from... Kelewanski saying, today is security, tomorrow it will be policies, brutality, and then NLC ASU strike, <laughs> then it will be the corruption, <laughs> then domestic violence, then poor <laughs> education, etc. Aren't all these enough to let us know that the problem with this country is more of a fundamental issue than all these symptoms? For me, I want to see a better Nigeria, but seriously, it can't be built on the tenets of emotions or just a mere slogan of one Nigeria but on ideologies drawn from the various natives that make up this country. Yes, but you see, the reason why we can't just dispense of Nigeria is that most people don't understand that this machine called Nigeria, since it has been created in 1914, is responsible for millions, tens of millions, of exploiting tens of millions of African lives that have been trapped within it. Wow. So we we'll just let it go with all the loot of that exploitation. When very well, those people that participated, those Africans that participated in the crime with Nigeria, mm. because Nigeria is an entity on its own. People have to understand that. When when I I don't when I say class and I don't talk ethnicity, it's not as if I don't understand what Nigeria is. Nigeria is the first of all, there was no African present mm. in the creation of Nigeria or any of these states, you know. Nigeria is actually, no matter how much the British uh, deny it, is the most populous, was the most populous of their colony, and you know, is the N word. Mm. It's not because of River Niger. Yeah. River Niger is named after Republic of Niger. Mm -hmm. They already have that. Yeah. We are not, we are the N word area. Yeah. You understand? That's if that's historical fact. Yeah. You know, from these racists, you know, so named by racists, created by racists. What do you think? Uh, they want. They think they want something. They created Nigeria so that we, the people trapped inside of it, will enjoy. This this thing started as a company, and what is the company for? It's to extract profit. Yeah. So it is. It was created to extract our resources and exploit our labor for profit. There's nothing anybody in Nigeria can say that they have, have achieved other than profit. Hmm. That's all they all have. Because that is all this country can give right, you. Let, let's you know? let's so read out let me some just more so, Me, I understand that. But at the same time, to counter such a machine is not only to dismantle it and blow it up. You must capture it or take control of it. Yes. See how it works. Mm -hmm. Then you cannot decide to either dismantle it or repurpose it. To suit your needs. Yeah. This is how we must move. We must move, you know, in, in, in a manner that we are trying to get the best out of our situation. Mm -hmm. Not to make matters worse for ourselves. That all the people you are that are pushing you on now enter their private jet. Mm -hmm. Fume, fume, fume. 
All this your pastor will not carry you. If you think it's because you bought church jets oh that when they are going, you will rush there with your family, you too, you will run. He's a lie. He's a lie. They might even deceive you that they will carry so you can even carry some of their load. Say, yes, we'll carry help us. Help us. Let, once they reach the tarmac, <coughs> when their security first change eye for you first, say, if you don't move, move. Mub, I say mub. He says mub. I say mub. What do you want? Mub back. Sheon, please let's read out some more tweets. <laughs> this is coming from Olugbenga on Twitter saying, Sheon, please kindly make sure you read this tweet. Too. Good morning. <laughs> Which tweet is that? Anyways, um, if you want to send a tweet, please send it to our handle at Lagos Talks 913. Use the hashtag the People's Perspective 913. You can tag Sheon, the real Sheon Koti, right? On Twitter. On Twitter and myself at ify underscore I. That's I F Y underscore I on Twitter if you're sending a tweet. If you want to give us a call, you could call 0809 234 5913. 0809 222 0913 0809 191 3913 also 01 515 0913 01 515 1913 Lagos talks now very quickly guys right, you see with regards to this thing in uh, in the southeast the way the military is always very quick to descend on the people from that region look there's something that we have not realized. And I was listening to Kunu. Kunu appears to be the only person who has realized it. It in that direction. This country belongs to a particular region, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Forget what they teach in classrooms. And they have shown us repeatedly, not too long ago, two days, two days ago, look at what the Arawa Constitutional Forum said, that the relationship with the Southwest is uh, a master-slave thing, a husband-wife thing. They rub these things on our faces every day. Once there's a little thing in the south, you see them descend heavily on us. Meanwhile, they have helicopters. They cannot go to to what's happening in Niger State and the, in, in, in the northwest region to descend on the so-called bandits. It's a shame. And my, my right. biggest worry is that our leaders in the south here are not seeing these things. All right, thank you for that. Uh, this is from Chifudo on WhatsApp saying, uh, good morning, Ify and the Big Bird. So our military can gather information and start acting without proof while Sheikh Gumi is busy <laughs> snapping selfies with killers and criminal elements and the Kagara kids were kidnapped. This is Sheikh Gumi is a religious is a, is a religious man. He has more power. I, these people don't understand the power these people have. Like you did mention earlier. I this is from you. Jay saying, I agree with Sheikh when he said that some politicians are investing in the military industrial complex abroad who make bombs and... Uh, they use it on Africans. This is coming from uh, Adebayo saying, good morning, Ifi, and the great revolutionary in the studio on the insecurity in the country. Sheon, how can we explain a situation where some set of people are clamoring for amnesty for terrorists called bandits, while the other people keep quiet over the invasion of Imo State? This is coming from... Uh, a uh, listener saying good morning, Miss Ifi and Comrade Cheon. Please, with the state of with the state of what's happening in Olu Imo State, what's the so-called governor uh, doing? Imagine he hasn't even deemed it wise to address the inhabitants of the state. This is coming from Michael saying um, when Aisha Buhari warned us that her husband's cabinet had been hijacked by cabal, we took it for play. Now see what is going on. This is coming from a listener saying, the people who suffer the most in Nigeria are the intelligent ones, the people who know. It's so sad to know and feel hopeless and unable to change anything. This is coming from a hit saying, good morning, why will the minister tell people to defend themselves? What did you vote the leaders for Nigeria is turning into Iran every day. This is coming Iran from... Iran is peaceful, though. You mean Iraq? This is probably Iraq. That's what she's saying. Ah. This is... This is coming from... Uh, Make a you told a new verse for us. Say, are you hoping to war for my country? You want to war for my country? <laughs> <laughs> this is from Khalid saying, it's TPP, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is TPP, yo. Say good morning, Evie and Jayon. God bless you guys for being the voice of the voiceless. Now, Shane, we need to move on because we're talking about insecurity. Let's also take a look at what happened in Niger State. Now, barely two months after over 300 students were kidnapped in the nearby Katina State, no fewer than 42 people, including 27 students and uh, about 15 of the school workers as well were kidnapped when bandits attacked government science secondary school Kagara in Niger. 
Niger State. Now, a resident who actually witnessed the kidnapping described how the kidnappers tied the victims in pairs and took them away. Now, just a few days before that kidnap happened, 18 passengers of the Niger State Transport Authority were kidnapped by bandits in Niger State. Now, this attack also occurred at one Yakila village in Rafi local government in Niger. Um, and it saw that the bandits... Say, say wait, um, all these people that they are killing and kidnapping, are they not us or not? Well, we're not aware. I'm not privy to the names of the individuals that were kidnapped. Okay. So, um, these this particular incident that happened a few days before the boys were kidnapped, like I mentioned, it happened in Yakila village. And from what we saw, we saw the bandits leaving a woman and her baby behind while they went away with 18 other passengers. Now, the passengers were said to be heading to Mina um, when that happened. From now, where? back to the schoolboys. We are not aware of that. Back to the schoolboys. Um, just an update. Okay, so from Ka... Kotangora. Ko you know Kutangora. Nigeria. Kotangora. Okay. Kotangora. <laughs> Is how I pronounce it. Oh, uh, if we, <laughs> I said you need to come and spend a month with me. Let me Nigerianize you. Where I'm very Nigerian. <laughs> I'm very evil. Um, this, um, well, going back to what happened to the schoolboys, just an update from that, because a lot of people are asking what's next, you know, what is the government doing in response to that? Bashir Ahmed, the personal assistant to the president on media and publicity, gave an update via his Twitter page saying, and I quote, the National Security Advisor, IGF Police, um, Information and Police Affairs Minister, are currently in MENA, Niger State, as part of uh, the federal government rescue operations of the students of the Government Science College in Kagara. Then later on, the Minister of Defense decided to chime in, uh, Major General Bashir Magashi. He said that the government will adopt the same tactics that it used to rescue the Kankara schoolboys to rescue the 27 students that were abducted. Now, the minister did disclose this on the sideline of the screening of service chiefs by the House of Representatives on the 17th of February. He did say that the service chiefs will swing into action immediately um they're done through with the screening he said and i quote we have demonstrated our ability to take on the challenge and we have done it in katina when the children were kidnapped within two days we got them back hopefully this time we will do the same to get this um th these captives back we are me, planning. please do help us and, make the call um he then went further to encourage the <laughs> general public which of course was a a, a a point of contention for a lot of people where he he did say that it is not the response responsibility of the military alone it is the responsibility of everybody to be alert and ensure that safety is there when necessary we shouldn't be cowards according to his words and he also went further saying sometimes the bandits come with about please, three wait, rounds before of you ammunition. go on before you go on, how many police were in his convoy to that place was giving this speech this man that said we shouldn't be cowards because it's very easy to not be a coward when you are surrounded by police and army working for you if me i have 20 policemen now in my convoy, waiting for me outside. You say be bold. I will be the bravest man here. Of this man, course. this hefty man here, if I fight, give a slap. <laughs> he said, no say I'm brave. If you look me, if my who look in your eye back, you go tell me, say, sorry, sir. Don't sorry, sir. Hey. Sure. So in my, you see, this, this is what I say about these people. So wait, 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 before you say anything about these people. So Sharon, because what he's saying now, what? he's saying that they're going to use the same tactics and techniques that they use to get back the um, 300, over 300 boys that were kidnapped. I remember at that time, there was a back and forth with the citizens accusing the government of negotiating with terrorists and paying a ransom, which the government did say, well, we didn't negotiate with terrorists, we didn't pay any ransom. And right now, they're saying that they're going to use the same tactics no, 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 no. to, to, to get these... the army and the government. The government that they negotiated to release the guy. The, the, the army the said... Three, over 300 uh, the, the army uh, said, for students. Where? We did the operation to... Exactly, but they did mention that they did not pay any ransom. <laughs> but, based on the speculations, mm. ransom was paid. But the government always says, and I, I believe this is a, 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 um, a narrative you know, from, or from the government of different you know, uh, nations where they say they do not negotiate with terrorists. And with what happened with the over 300 boys... No, but first of all, every government negotiates with terrorists. But they will never outright yeah, exactly, come out to say... Exactly, because once terrorists hold you for way of strong, course, you talk they to. definitely have to. But now confess. they're saying that they're going to use the same <laughs> tactics to get back the boys that were kidnapped. So what are your thoughts about this? Because if the governor of this state as well is saying that he's not going to pay any ransom, that's what the governor is saying. He said he's not going to pay any ransom, but the military is saying we're going to use the same tactics that we used to get so back over three hundred. They'll get back the. Boys. So far they get back the people. Mm -hmm. We thank them. <laughs>
whatever if, tactics they but use. If, but if there is a because but if there me, is a division between what the military is saying and what the chief security me, officer of a state is saying. What I'm saying is if I immediately I hear news like this, like because I'm a dad now. Children You've been a dad they, for a while now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a dad, dad now. now. Like no, yeah, but you know. Yeah. I've been seven years a dad. Exactly. You know? <laughs> So almost 12 years a slave. <laughs> Seven years a dad does almost 12 years a slave. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. So now, but so as a parent, I, I think when I hear news about children, the first thing that happens to me is that I immediately put myself in the position of the parent. What if this was my child? And if any of those parents right now, all these things we are saying on the radio, the tactics the government want to use, the military say, for them, it, it means nothing. What matters is, where's my kid? Who is going to help exactly. me find this child? Whatever tactics, whatever way. So that's why I'm like, let, if they can get the kid, but, just but, get them back first. But, but, they but cannot go people, into analysis. But a lot of people believe that the more you play to what the kidnappers are asking for, the terrorists are asking for, the more you become a slave to this set of people because they know that they can further kidnap because they know where to hold you to get the ransom and oh sorry my pen has dropped if you didn't want to pick it up with me under the desk, no, I don't. like high school <laughs> you're a joker show but aside that the, the the citizens are also saying so if the government of nigeria is paying a ransom to terrorists you're indirectly financing the weapons of the terrorists of course so really what is the state of this decision that the government might, you know, decide to go with if they're saying that they're going to pay a ransom. But we know that indirectly that is financing terrorism. Well, you see, first of all, first and foremost, you know, these bandits and criminals. Election here, many of them are working for. I mean, even Boko Haram started as Modusheri, what was his name? That's but no governor. You know, it's not election. We all know like. Half of the talks in Lagos, more than half, three quarter, even, you know, seven eighths, seven eighths, <laughs> seven eighths eighth of all the talks in Lagos work for one politician or the other. Interesting. And they're all mobilized, you know. You find that during election, kidnapping will stop. All these things will stop because boys they're are engaged. concentrating on the, on the job at hand, you know. So for me, even when people say headsmen, headsmen, Okay, if headmen are really a problem, is it the person working with the cow that is the problem or the owner of the cow? Because he's the one that is sending them now. You know, so why are we not saying head owner? Why? Because we are programmed, say, to hate the rich. I mean, hate the poor and revere the rich in this country. Because mm. Once you start saying, uh, why are these head owners behaving like this? Can they modernize if we make it about the head owners? But you know, the head owners, nobody wants to be their enemy. But it's, it's easy to, you know, brutalize innocent and guilty headsmen, you know, because, yeah, they are poor like you and me. But mm. the issue about Nigeria is that, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you don't know this, but as a Nigerian, you are kidnapped. You're already living a life of ransom daily. What is manifesting <clears throat> in all these, in all these nether regions of our country, in the rural areas, is a physical manifestation of the social relationship between we, the people, and the rich people of this country. So what do I mean by kidnapped? It simply means our existence is, is held at ransom mm. of low wages and high services. So what, what do I mean? I mean... Imagine if all the rich people in Nigeria was one person mm. and we, the rest of Nigeria, are also one person and we, you work for this person, right? Remembering very well that in the slavery days, right, the slave master had to take care of the slaves' clothing, housing, medicine, transport, feeding, everything the slave needs. Then now the slave is free. You know, he has to buy these things from the same master who is economically better. So we employ us, mm -hmm. you know. So now, where it's peculiar in Nigeria for me and in Africa in general is that unlike the rest of the world where this dynamic is like, okay, I'll pay you this wage for you to go and buy all those things that I normally give you for free, you know. 
But in Nigeria, we're giving low wages. People don't understand how dangerous this is. Because low wages means that we cannot afford quality services for our, for our sales and our family. Nobody wants their child to go to a decrepit school. You understand? Everybody wants their child to go to the best school, to become the best that they can be. And how much is the school fees of the best school in Nigeria? Mm. Of the best schools? We're talking millions of Naira from primary school. No, not that you're even in university yet. From primary school, you're already paying millions of Naira. Who can afford that? Minimum wage is uh, 30,000. So imagine if you're even a bank, branch manager in a bank, and you're earning 2 million a month. You have three children. You have to give them private education, the three of them. You have to give, uh, get a house, a nice house in a safe environment. This same person that is paying you this low wage now is the owner of those schools. Because it's those same people that own the schools. Of course. They're the ones that own the hospitals. They're the ones that own the real estate. They own everything that we use these low wages to fight for. Now, here's the worst part of it all. Is that for us, these people have the power for us here, they have the power to influence government to the extent that government has divested from public services. People say Nigerian schools are not good, teachers are not. It's, mm -mm. it's not good because nobody is putting money. The Senate budget in Nigeria alone is more than our education and health budget combined. For just for the Senate, 700 and something people. There is more than uh, educational budget of the whole country of 200 and something, of maybe the 100 and something million that need public education. So now, they've defunded public school. So with your wages, you cannot even say, oh, I'm not going to their school. If Tobafeki Ayomoeda, if you want your child to have a good future, you have to take your child to their school. So with the low wages, now you are working there. Your money for your work, your salary doesn't match what those things that you need. Is it no, not easier for that same guy that has put you in this position to now make you mortgage your soul, like hold you for and say, do this. And you two, you have to do it. Not even because you want to, you don't want to lose your job. This is not even secondary, but because you have to pay your bills. The bills that you are paying to him that is giving you the low wage. That's our relationship in Nigeria with the rich. We are held at ransom by low wages. They give us African salary, but all their services are charged at world-class prices. Mm. Very true. Yes, that's what I'm saying. When they, you know, that's why even in our government, before you know anything, our petrol low, Holding us to ransom with it, the counter say, eh, but that is not how they do it in the rest of the world. That is not how they do it in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Is that how they pay people salary in Saudi Arabia? If you want to compare us and our uh, economy, compare it where? Bring Central African Republic. Bring our meat there. Bring Benin Republic. You'll be talking about Norway. Can you pay Nigerians mm -hmm. a tenth of what Norway people pay their people for minimum wage? No. So why are you telling us about how Norway is running their economy or selling their petrol or how Saudi is doing it when you know fully well that you do not give us the wages? So I'm saying it and I'll continue to say it. that It is the same set of people that are holding our lives to ransom with this arrangement. They're the same set of people that are behind all these things that happen in all the areas of this country. Yeah. It is them and their agents. Because first of all, they are even the only ones that can afford such a thing. All right, you know, let, let's move further into the topic for today or the theme, which is insecurity. If you are listening and if you're sending tweets, please ensure that you use the hashtag V People's Perspective 913. And so the question right now is... Well, they control security votes. Don't forget that. There you go. <laughs> which, which they don't give account for, clearly. And so in, in light of that, do you think that if the governors begin to have some sort of influence, you know, um, towards the police or towards the military, that it's going to make a difference in insecurity in their different states? You arrest a governor's son or as a military man, slap a governor's daughter. Then you know the governor has influence mm. over the military. I keep telling people in this country, it's only when it comes to, comes to doing their job. Only when it comes to serving us. Because they see us as being, if people don't understand this, as in Nigerians are refusing to understand what I'm telling them about the elites of this country and what they behold there and how they, how they see the political and the ruling class in this country. 
that they see us as so beneath them that now we are not worthy of their service. How can we be working for these people? You know, understand? That's their, that's how they think. So when it comes to our protecting our lives or doing their job as it relates to us, you start hearing all sorts of excuses. I don't control the military. I don't control the... I have mm -hmm. no power. The, uh, but when it comes to their own personal business or personal lives, they use their influence in all these institutions to get goals, to get uh, results. Mm. When they want to put their children... Ah, they don't pause me to bad connection. Africa, sorry. Let's go. <laughs> you stop my Instagram live. <laughs> Let's keep it going. You know? So when it comes to delivering services for us here in Nigeria, suddenly everybody is coming up with all sorts of manners of excuses and how powerless they are. I mean, you see governors, ministers acting like victims in this country. Mm. You know, Buhari, the president of Nigeria, coming out, talking like, you know, we are victimizing him. You understand that kind of thing? So, I mean, this is, this is the style here. This is the style. We know this style. You know, we know this style. I don't think, I think governors as is, they have, they, they, know, they know their states well enough. To be a governor of a state, you know, you cannot be a, uh, a novice about yeah, that state. You know, you must know that state in and out, like the back of your hand. You must get people for every area. You understand? Nothing will happen in that state. If you cannot find out through official channels, you find out through the unofficial channels that have been existing in Africa since time in Memoria. You understand? You know, so because... Is the community. You know, nothing can happen in the community without the community. Of you know, so when right. they start giving all these excuses, I just take a look at their personal lives yeah. and see how these kind of excuses never come up when they are trying to achieve things from our commonwealth to, for that matter. I'm not saying, Indeed. you know, I'm not even blaming them all for right, doing let's things for themselves. Let's take some calls. Lagos Talks, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, I beg your pardon. Good morning. 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 Hey, Buka, how are you doing? Welcome to... Where's my baby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Buka, how are you doing? 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 Put things really as it is because their response is showing that we are separate apart. Get because look at what's happening in our law, and it's just the clarity of you know, what they are saying the elite using their money to protect their personal interest, which is of particular people. And we are talking of the unity of Nigeria, listening to Adeni Kuni talk about marginalization, everything. And we believe Nigeria will work for us all. Okay. But at the end of the day, the response is, is harsh. It don't make sense. Thank you, bro. Lagos Talks, good morning. Who's speaking, please? All right, we lost that. This is coming from Olu saying, I support the military operations in Olu. They should go to all Nigerian forests and flush out all the criminals, not only in Olu. This is from a, he's saying, these government individuals don't care about the masses anymore. It is not people that own their, isn't, is it not people that own those cows? Their own land is not good to real cows. Why are the, why are they using their own to dis, disturb other states? Everybody, listen, I, we understand what you mean. I'd rather not read the rest of that. This is coming from Kelowanski saying, um, Sheon, we are a different people, whether you like it or not. You can't use the analogy that an evil woman has in successful marriage with an Hausa man, except that analogy suffices for the people. It is not bad governance or bad luck that the region, not geography, but cultural, that's... Ha Listen. Yeah, I said, yeah, I'm yeah, just so You confused. can tell these tribalists... They, I'm just really confused. These, this these is tribalists, you know, you can tell them by their uh, typing skills. <laughs> This is coming from <laughs> Adivaise. If, we, if only if we have the highest number of roadblocks in the southern part of the country, the same in the northern part of the country, the terrorists called bandits would not have been able to kidnap larger numbers of people in that part of the country. Um, the question is, this is 2021. How come we still have rural area in this country? This is another question nobody's asking. Very good question. What this... was the meaning of rural area in 2021? 
this is coming from Udochiku saying it baffles me how bandits Boko Haram herdsmen roam around some bushes without fighting each other. <laughs> Interesting. This is coming from Adebe Ega saying Nigeria Minister of Defense. What, what are they supposed to do? As soon as I just see themselves. Say, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I didn't guy is saying Nigeria Minister of Defense char is charging harmless people to defend themselves against Boko Haram bandits that carry sophisticated weapons. Honestly, um, this cabinet is full of weirdos. It reveals the mental state of these individuals. This is coming from Khalid Zainsho. Do you think the kidnapping of school children has a political undertone? Because it seems to be a new trend amongst our militia. This is coming from. Of course, um, now. It's do me, I do you. I uh, think when APC, you know, when PDP was there, bring back our guests. Mm -hmm. That was APC. They say APC politicize it. In fact, the president did not even believe it happened at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the then president, Jonathan. Then his wife came to say, uh, uh, there is God, though. Remember that I press remember. conference with the principal of the school? It's time Berating her for lying it would always be a that classic. there was a kidnap. Of course. All these bloody people are shedding in Borono. Sharing, actually. Sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is coming from she, she don't enter her blood. Um, Field Marshal saying, yes, you're right, because in the South, they engage in extortion of people and businesses like mad. And not only state, but local government and area boys, uh -uh. but nothing to show for collecting the money. And they tell that, you it they, is, that it is easier to do business in the North than the South. The issue uh, going with uh, uh, Northerners and this whole banditry, that they are losing their lives in humongous numbers. Of course. In enormous numbers. It's still being under-recorded as you well. And this is what I'm saying. Like, So instead of us to see it as, uh, see us as an, a class under attack, they are trying to let us see ourselves as attacking each other. You understand? Whereas it's just a class of us, the same set of us, that they've always been here. They are the same people that were willing to sell their brothers and sisters that time for things like mirror that they value, they've always valued things over people, yeah. And since the, we came in contact with the Europeans, they've been empowered, you know, due to European commerce and trade and guns, mm. you know. They've been empowered to become those that have been running our societies now for the last 500 years. That's why 60 years of independence, they can't solve one problem. That's ridiculous. Let's take these calls, Lagos Talks. Good morning, who's speaking? Hello. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Good morning, you. good morning, what's your name? Uh, my name is Simona. Emmanuel, let's hear you. Hey, hey. How you doing, my brother? I do fine. You're all the time. Fine, fine. In fact, God will continue to bless you people for sticking out the trip. Amen. The unfortunate thing is that uh, many of the lemon in the street, the government is not listening to them. If this get together, called Nigeria, is not working out, is it not better all of us to hand on this can agree to divide? Do you say that? Come to Do think about it, at the time, my own father was not born in Nigeria. He was born in 1901. Nigeria came into existence in 1914. So I can still talk to the, to the uh, system of my father to say I'm not a Nigerian. So do many of us. If he, I know fella was born after them, but before then, his own father wasn't born in Nigeria. He found a state. So yes, if this course, is not uh, working, let us just deny this country and everybody go. Why would these people continue to humiliate us? Let us let them out of the country feel as if they are nobody. It's not fair now. Yeah, but the truth start is, sticking us the may I feel like even us. if we break up, our local politicians will continue the same behavior that they continue, that they have under Nigeria. And if the break up happens today, eh, I'm telling you, those who fight for this freedom will not allow the politicians to take advantage of all right. That is already All okay. right. Thank you very much for your take. Uh, this is coming from Francis and Sheon. Please, your response to the northern narrative that they are husband, the South is wife, that that they are master and South is slaves. Me. I don't know. So his response. They said what? me uh, one Arab consultative for. Okay. What's your response to that? To uh, first that of all, narrative. I, 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 first of all, me, I've I've, I've not uh, ever paid mind to those because as I said, me, I've well, is, you know. My political consciousness yeah. has already outgrown this kind of, you know, uh, uh, pr uh, what do I call it? Kindergarten style, you know, propaganda system. Yeah. You no, know, yeah, I've grown past. Nobody can catch me with that kind of line. Indeed. Because first of all, I know that not not be all Northerners appoint them as spokesperson. Of course, of course. I can bet my 
what can I bet? I can bet my watch that majority of Northerners disagree with what he's saying. Mm. They're going to talk, who sent this one message now? Eh? That already is shit. You know? Look at Trump in America, for example. Trump was the president of the United States with huge following. Yeah. And they voted for him. And he was saying mean racist things. But even at that, there was still an America that did not support Trump. Of course. We Nigerians, we validate that America that did not support Trump. No matter what Trump was doing, we cannot extend the same courtesy to our brothers in the North. Mm -hmm. That, okay, it is not all the that are talking like Trump, like this Mieti Alao. There are other Northerners like you and me that don't believe in this um, narrative. But we rather give the liberals of America that believe, you know, that we believe our friends the benefit of the doubt to save America than we give to our own brothers. No matter what Trump says in America, yeah. how many Nigerians hate America today? Hmm. All right, Cheo, it's 12. We need to wrap this up. It's been a great show. Thank you so much to everyone who was a part of this show. As always, a pleasure. Thank you, Instagram, you. for removing me from my life. Thank you. I will, I will not talk too much again But we'll have our video up on our YouTube page by today. So in case you would like to go over the show um, and also see us in the studio as well, you can check out our YouTube page, Lagos Talks 913, for today's episode of The People's Perspective. Big Bird! Always a pleasure. Oh my gosh. I actually didn't know that that was like a signature tone. Until yeah, I heard yeah, that yeah. That's my, <laughs> that's my, any, any jam you hear, just know the big bird is, is about to jump in. <gasps> oh my gosh. All right, so what are your handles for those who want to follow you? Big bird cutie on, um, Instagram. Instagram. Big Bird Kuti on PlayStation. In case network, in case really? you feel like you can play FIFA and you're, you're, you're feeling like, you know, you know, you want to try yourself. I mean, look for that handle. Let's 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 dance. And Real Sheon Kuti. On Twitter. On Twitter. All right, guys. Reach out to me on Instagram and Twitter at ify underscore i. That's I-F-Y underscore I. The People's Perspective is on Fridays, 11 a.m. to 12. Make it a date with us. Coming up next is the World News coming to you live from our media studios. Stick around. We are Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's talk.